Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, um, for arriving and connecting on the brand. It's been an amazing journey in the rollout of this brand. So thank you very much um, for connecting. Um, love the global feel here on Zoom. So it's absolutely perfect um, to see you all. And as I was saying earlier, it's really nice. I'm beginning to put names to faces um, because of emails and questions that have been asked. So it's great to see you. Um, so wonderful. Um, so this is our monthly gathering. And uh, with this coaching session for us, um, the intention of this one really is uh, Marcotte and I, Marcotte is to the left of me. I presume you're all seeing, there we go. A big wave from Marcotte. Um, Marcotte and I will be looking at imagery for this session, but like with any, um, any of these brand sessions, feel free to ask any brand question or from the conversations that you hear today, if it triggers something or if you've got, you know, got something that you really want to email, please email me. It was wonderful after the last session. I really appreciated the emails that I received because again, it allowed um, me to answer some of the questions that I hadn't even thought about myself to even cover. And it also allows us to fine tune ctfbrand.com um, in order to help you and support you. And so you're spotting things that um, is absolutely brilliant that I've not seen and not spotted. And so we're just expanding on the content there to help you. Um, so in any area that you're um, finding that you need extra support, it's great because once you bring an awareness to me, I can also put that information and put that content back onto the website for other people to see. Um, so feel free to, um, again, keep asking me questions, keep emailing me. And, and of course, if we've got time today, we're more than welcome to answer anything relevant to imagery, but also anything that's um, anything to do with brand. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm Jo. Um, and so I'm the one that's been answering your questions on email. Um, and um, it was great, the last session. So we're progressing now into the next brand component, which is imagery. Um, and I do appreciate that not all of you are on the communications team or in media or a designer or a photographer, but each one of you still is impacted by Catch the Fire's brand. And so it's wonderful that you're here connecting because I think sometimes um, it's just really important to understand context, understand our goal with particular brand components in order for you to understand or pass on to your communications team. Um, and then when you spot imagery that isn't quite aligning to the brand that you understand, you can at least flag it, you can be aware of it, you can own it and um, understand that that doesn't quite match up um, to the brand that we've established so far. It's the details really, and it's every now and again, certain details will jump at you um, and realize that actually it's not quite right. Do you know what? I care enough to do something about this. So thank you for, um, for bringing ownership really and caring. Um, so, yep, I do want to say a huge thank you as well, though, for, for following through on, on all of those kind of things in order to help you roll out the brand. Um, it's wonderful seeing now since um, just, you know, look at us now, we're, we're in April and it's great. So people are actually showing me um, as well. So if you, if you feel uncertain about a design, especially when it has a huge cost, attached to it like signage feel free to even show me that does the layout look good is the use of the logo work well is the use of the colors are working well have i um, understood it enough to to pass this on to the printers you know i understand that that is a big budget those big budget um things feel free to or even the low budget ones if it's um a print a print run that you want to just show feel free to um, I can take a look at it and immediately understand, you know, certain design elements, certain ways in which it looks. Is it is the language even the language that we want to portray? Because all of us 
are learning the how-to and we're learning the how-to almost in an organic way because really it's almost like okay we need this so I need to produce this in order to get that that actual project out um, so feel free feel, feel free to email those kind of things as well those design things that you just want to touch base before you do um, a big spend um, so last, it was good because last, the takeaway of last session was, you know, what one thing can you do um, to bring um, the rollout into fruition? And so it's been wonderful to see that all of you have, all of you um, in the ones that have connect, connected with me have um, actually started to apply that. So it's really good to see movement in that. Um, and actually it gives space for feedback. It gives space for trying it out see whether it works and you know what we can evaluate and we can reshape and um and do something differently um i'd rather you try it and see whether it works than to not do it at all um and it's wonderful i even mentioned to ben i said wow when i when i look at the the colors when i look at the font when i look at the logo family the icon when i see it in context it's really inspiring and it just gives a big smile on my face just seeing seeing it all um, out there and it's interesting now when you do see the um, last year's or the previous year's brand you begin to realize wow we have cleaned up an awful lot already in such a short amount of time so thank you thank you for putting that in action okay so i'm going to pass you over to mark cart and she will start expanding on the imagery for now are you ready, Mark? You need to unmute. Here we go. I gotcha. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, great. Uh, I'm excited to talk about imagery because I feel like it's one of the um, one of the things that um, is accessible to everyone. If you guys haven't heard this quote, a picture is worth a thousand words, and um, I feel like it rings true to how we can portray our brand and um, and uh, talk about who we are to the world. Um, we live in a very visual world. If you guys have Facebook or Instagram, how, how many of you stop when you see um, that your friend had a baby and posted a photo or like someone celebrating a birthday or you like this like super fashionable image just double tap and like it. Um, more, like now more than ever, I feel like images uh, are super important in how you tell the world about your life and how you tell the world about yourself. So um, yeah, I'm super excited to talk about this. And uh, it really is an important part of our brand. Um, and, you know, everyone has a camera on their phones now. So it would be worth to just talk about um, some practical ways to apply um, photography and how we can express our brand through uh, photography. So first thing I want to refer everyone to is to ctfbrand.com slash imagery. And um, in here are a few guidelines for how uh, and examples for how we can express the brand, especially through photography. Um, as many of you know, our brand essence is presence, encounter, and transformation. And sometimes it, it's a little too vague to just say those words. And it's almost better to show someone what that looks like and what that feels like. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're communicating through social media or through like an email to your leaders. I feel like adding a photo would just um, stop people and get their attention and help you express what you're saying better. So one of the things that, um, that I want to emphasize actually is um, there's two ways that you can uh, apply photography. And one of them is just being a, um, like you can look at it from like a journalistic perspective or like a documentary style. Like you wanna tell an honest and authentic story of what your church is like, what your community is like, uh, what your group is like. Um, so here in Toronto, we have a lot of um, corporate vibrant like 
church uh, worship photos because that's what happens here. And um, this photo actually is from London and one of their outreaches. And you can tell that um, it's a, maybe a smaller group. It's a little bit more uh, vibrant. Um, uh, same with, uh, let's see, this one. This one is more of like a community event. Um, so there's many ways that you can express who you are in the best uh, light. Um, and what you really want to show is the experience or what people are going to experience, um, especially when you're inviting them to church or to your community. Uh, so one of the photog I'm just going to go through some of the photography guidelines uh, that we no, can we see those. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, my goodness. I am yeah. so sorry. I am not sharing my screen. <laughs> Let me Can, is everybody, there you go. my mistake. Yeah, you can see Technical it. difficulties. <laughs> so yeah, if you, um, if you can go to ctfbrand.com slash imagery, some of the uh, things I'm gonna talk about and some of the examples I'm gonna show would be on the webpage. So as I was saying, um, what we wanna try to communicate is, uh, um, an authentic version of who we are. And I encourage you to do that specifically for your community and showing photos that reflect your, communi uh, your community accurately. So um, if you're a big church, if you're a small church, uh, focus on the, the good. So um, I used to go to Cash Fire Brampton and I, it's like a group of 50 people. And what I, the, what I feel when I go to that church is, family and like a small community. So the kinds of images that I would probably use is something uh, here where it's a smaller community focusing on relationship between people. Whereas here at Catch the Fire uh, Church in Toronto, um, we host a lot of events. We have a bigger community and, uh, and stage and lights and we host a lot of conferences. So a lot of the times the images that we use would be um, of corporate worship um, and people like passionately wor worshiping and pursuing God. I mean, those are kind of our values. So you can do it at your church too. It's just going to look different. Instead of dark photo, you're probably going to have more light, sort of like this one. So really work with, um, with, your community and express it so that when people visit your church or go to your church, um, they, will, they will see what you're advertising or if that makes sense. Um, and they will, experience, uh, they will experience it the way that you show it. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some of the photography guidelines. And, um, and yeah, this will help visually um, express some of our essence, like our brand essence. So one of the things that's super important for us is showing the diversity of age, gender, ethnicity, whatever it is that makes up your church. Um, it's, we think it's super important to show the range of, of your community. And uh, it's really important to depict real people living real moments. So what we mean by that would be um, showing more action shots, uh, catching people in candid moments. Uh, if you look at this photo here at the corner, you can tell that it's not posed. Um, and you're basically showing uh, the people uh, as they are. Um, the other thing that uh, would help a lot would be focusing on one subject and really capturing the emotion. And um, we, like, we think that this will help with communicating things like, um, like the idea of encountering God. Like it's a very private moment. It's a very powerful moment. And when you uh, capture individual photos like this with people on the ground or um, this of what I think is baptism, 
you create a more personal uh, connection with the photograph and um, and you also, you also let people connect to it emotionally and you get to express the feeling of um, of encountering God if if that makes sense so the other things do that we um, that we want to show would be um, focusing on the celebration um, and capturing moment in action. Uh, I, we think that um, capturing the celebration translates to um, living a transformed life. We want to communicate that being at Catch the Fire, being part of a Catch the Fire church means that you're going to be full of life, your relationship will be healthy. It's the, it's, you want to communicate um, the revival, like the life essence of what it means to go to a Catch the Fire church. So people praying for each other um, like this and also uh, expressing community like this would, uh, I think, ring true no matter what the size of your church is. Um, so yeah, those are some of the tips in terms of content. Um, we encourage you to focus on people a lot. We are a brand that care about people. We want to lead people to encounters with God. And so we really encourage you when you're taking photos to focus on a person, a group, or or corporate group like this. Um, we want to avoid things like uh, posed images like this. And while it communicates, maybe communicates team and community, it also feels very staged and posed. And so it kind of feels a bit not genuine. Um, the other part that we want to discourage would be using something that's too um, not just cliche, but too abstract. Um, this is a photo of a dove um, touching or, or flying into the, the book, which can, we can assume is a Bible. It just feels, there's many, like the, when we want to express God, we want to express God moving into people. So when we're choosing photos, we want to choose photos that actually show people encountering God, people worshiping God, people celebrating life um, because God is in them, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, one of the other things that uh, we want to avoid would be to um, misrepresent your church and your community. Uh, and that could be like saying, <laughs> if I want to invite someone to a picnic and I'm showing something, a photo of a beach when it's not at the beach, that's kind of not true to what I'm trying to say. So we just want you to be authentic, we want you to be real, um, but obviously still showing your church and your community in the best light. Um, so let's see one of the other, okay. I'm just going to show another, um, tip and maybe some tricks that I use. <laughs> that sounds very funny, but, um, one of the things that I want to encourage everyone actually is if you don't have, um, a photographer at your church, uh, I would suggest to actually find one and do a photo shoot because um, with one photo shoot, you can actually gather many different aspects of your church in one go. And that would allow you to have a bank of photos that you can use over time. And at the Catch the Fire, ctfbrand.com website actually, we have, uh, we have a list of creative freelancers and you can find a photographer through there, um, hopefully in your area that you can work with. 
so that you can um, plan out and create a photo bank of your own. Um, most of the time though, you might not either have the time to do that or the budget to do that. And so through the website, actually, we suggested using Unsplash, uh, which is a stock photography website. And so this is a good alternative. We honestly use this in Toronto as well. Um, one of the challenges that we have actually is that um, it's sometimes hard to capture smaller communities because we're such a big church. Um, so sometimes we find ourselves uh, just looking for group photos here and then, um, and then finding a photo that's appropriate for what we want to do. So here are some tips for just how do you, how to use stock imagery um, and how do you, uh, how to apply the brand guide when you're choosing a stock photo. So one of the things, the first things that I do is to think about the context. So the context would be um, what's it for and what are you trying to say? So is this an invitation to your church? Are you creating a newsletter or an email to your connect leaders? Are you posting an encouraging social media post? Really think about what you're trying to communicate before um, choosing a photo because the content will guide the image. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Um, so here in this, um, in this doc is um, a document that we want. It's a newsletter that we want to send out to our uh, connect leaders. And the title is Focus. Now, a lot of the times you might be tempted to just, oh, this is the headline or this is the title. I'm just going to go search for the word focus on Unsplash. So if, if I go to Unsplash and just type out the word, oops, focus, this is what you get. The word focus, lenses focusing, um, glasses, blurry images, um, yeah, tempted, you, you will be tempted to do something like to maybe choose something like this. But if you read actually the, I just exited it, <laughs> my bad. Give me one second. There you go. If we go on to read um, the paragraph even more, the, the word focus actually is us asking our leaders to focus on groups. Groups are important to us um, and we want to say that as ministers and pastors, we want you to focus on groups. One person, three people, we're talking specifically specifically about small groups. I think that, so to apply the brand into a situation like this, I would um, actually use the word groups as my keyword because a group would suggest that we're talking about people, not camera lenses. And so I think it would yield better image search for us. Um, so because we're talking about small groups, specifically about connect groups and community groups, um, typing up group in Unsplash already gives you a bunch of different results. Um, and I think something like this, where people are laughing casually would sp speaks life already, maybe transformation. Um, and also gives the word group a positive vibe. What you really want to communicate, you don't want to be like super literal about the word focus or even about the group, but you just want people to have a good, uh, a good vibe and refocus them to like our brand essences. It's like you're saying, 
you're going to be transformed when you join this group without saying that super literally. So uh, I'm just going to copy this image and put this here. And when you're, and so basically I'm going to use this image as a header for our newsletter. This, so yeah, choosing something like this would communicate the brand better because um, it will focus on people uh, and it gives you more of the vibe as opposed to choosing something like this, which is a literal focus image. Um, one of the other things that I would suggest would be um, picking key specific keywords for your church. Um, one of the things that we want to, one of our uh, goals in Toronto actually is to focus on belonging and um, and to give people a feeling of belonging when they go to Catch the Fire Church in Toronto. So some of my focus words would be um, belonging, community, family, friendly, uh, warm, and casual. Um, and if I just even look for the words um, friendly, I feel like even things like this would probably apply to Catch the Fire Church here in Toronto if I want to say invite people to um, a women's meeting. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, just really be intentional when you're choosing photos and make sure you follow the guide and uh, yeah. This actually is a sample of um, just what we've been doing with Catch the Fire Toronto. And um, let's see. Yeah, we just really try to communicate our church um, the best that we can uh, and really express some of the things that happens at our church. So a lot of the times we lay hands on people um, and we pray for people one-on-one. -on -one. We do have like a huge corporate worship happening most of the time um, and yeah we try to just show people at different ages um, like we're a family church so we try to um, show families pretty much um, I think that's it that's great. Thanks, Marka. Do you mind putting back the Instagram page? Oh, sure. Just show you. It's really um, been, let me just mute you a minute. Marka, there we go. Um, yeah, it's been really great to actually um, show really the personality. If you just scroll through all of them, Marka, so we just have a big splash on the page. Yeah. So if you, if you look at these, this is definitely unique to Toronto. Um, we have quite a dark area. We have lots of lights. There's definitely those um, range of tones and colors in the auditorium. Um, and so this is specific to Toronto. If you duplicated those for your church, then that's when it wouldn't look authentic because it isn't actually situated in the same environment unless you have quite a dark background and lights very similar to Toronto. Um, and so it's really um, powerful to actually begin to start collecting stuff that actually is unique to you and your church or your ministry within Catch the Fire brand um, and, and be intentional with it. I think, um, I think it's not until we need an image that we scramble along and then we've realized we're using the same image five or 10 times in <laughs> different scenarios. And before we know it, we've actually 
um, used it too much. And then we see in the same photograph used on a brochure for this or a newsletter for that or a website for that or an, a, an email newsletter for that. And before you know it, you've kind of exhausted a couple of the images. So it's really important to keep photos flowing. So you've got a big portfolio of the different genres, the different styles, the different um, environments and you know, even having like a um, on the ready portfolio of images for who's your leader that can go up with a biography that you're about to, to write, who's the um, kids ministry pastor. Um, so that you, you're just beginning to build it up. Oh, look, we've got um, something on baptism here, um, especially for those churches who don't yet have a photographer at hand. Um, and just really recommend you to keep it fresh, keep it alive, keep it current. Um, and of course, some, you know, it's really good just looking at Unsplash because that will actually also give you ideas. It'll give you composition ideas. It'll give you tonal um, range ideas. Go back to the color component on um, ctfbrand.com. You will see what color palette um, really complements the brand. Um, so they're the things that actually would be really valuable for you just to even go away from this session now and just think, okay, what one thing can we do as a church, as a team, to actually be intentional um, to build up our own portfolio of imagery so when we do need it and when we do need more than one we've actually got a good a good resource to access um, and that might be some you know a, a wonderful creative volunteer that you have in your team as well that would appreciate having that as a project and and do short projects where um, you can categorize and start collecting um, because one of the questions that has been asked and um, is you know is there like a central Google folder that we can all access and as yet we don't have that um, that is definitely something that would be really valuable to start building the only thing of concern is if we all use the same photographs again we'll just exhaust that same photograph and then we realize hold on a minute was that local to Toronto was that local um, to Brazil was that local to UK and before we know it it, it can um, maybe okay but it may also be we choose the same photograph for many many different things um, and so this is just a great way for you to really go away and be intentional with gathering um, images that you can have as your own stock library um, for your own church and for your own usage and um, start playing around and 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 just seeing what it is you actually need imagery for um, it's just an important area does anybody have any questions from um, what has been spoken about um, in the session? Is there any, anything that you'd like to text chat or even raise your hand? Um, no, you're all good. That's great. Yeah, please do, Kathy. Um, I've brought this up to you already, but the thing that I've noticed is you have a picture, but then what's written doesn't match with the picture at all. Any comment on that? Um, lots. <laughs> <laughs> or is that a different conversation? I don't know. Well, okay. I have a personal opinion on it. And I think my job now moving forward, especially working with my team, is to make sure that the photos and, um, and the image match um, as best as we can. And so um, I, I feel like it's okay, like if you're scrolling through our feed or like our, um, our social media i think it's i think if you catch that something feels off or like something doesn't match um message me and i'll look at it and like flag it or like maybe talk to my team about it my personal point of view is that it's better to be um like journalistic about it and what i mean by that is like really think about um, what you're trying to say and try to convey that with um, the image that you're picking. 
So again, it goes back to like my picnic example. If I'm inviting someone to a picnic and what I'm showing is like the beach with, I don't know, the beach in Brazil and I'm in Canada. I feel like that's ingenuine and I'd rather, um, I'd rather be accurate in what I'm trying to portray than be like, and then pursue the feeling of like, oh, you're gonna have great fun at the beach. I feel like I'd rather portray like the, the park that I'm going to be in rather than, I don't know, the beach. Do you have specific questions in terms of what would help you choose a better photo or would you rather like, I don't know, I guess give me context for this maybe? So I'm thinking of um, more what's written is great, mm -hmm. and pictures great, but they do not match at all. So it'd be more like, um, you know, cats are wonderful. And then you show a dog park. Yeah. Like that. I mean, so I would discourage I that. Think, yeah. So I can think of one um, that was just recent, like Resurrection Sunday fantastic awesome but it there was a picture of like a dance party at fresh wind which okay i don't think for me those two things wouldn't really go together yeah no and that's a fair critique like i i would discourage that and instead think about what resurrection sunday means yeah. for you so for me i would say um okay resurrection sunday means redemption it means um, most, okay, I would just say Easter because it's easier for me. But Easter also means like family, like gathering with my family um, and just really connecting with a community and reflecting on what Jesus has done. So there's a couple of things that I would do to portray that. One, focus on small groups um, and maybe pick like a small group photo because uh, I think that will say it's a, it's a personal thing. Um, another option for an image would be like a worship photo, either corporate, um, because you as a community is expressing your love and your thankfulness to Jesus for what he's done. And, um, and that would be like another good alternative because that talks about what it means to the church. Um, so those would be the two things. Um, yeah, and I would, yeah, I would just really reflect back on what you're trying to say. Um, and then, and then think about different ways to portray that. I think it's also good to um, realize that some photographs can be used in different environments. So if you've captured um, a family photograph at, um, I don't know, a potluck lunch, but then you need a family photograph for another scenario and it works, then absolutely mix and match. It doesn't have to be literal. But again, it goes back to what Marcotte said. You know, if, if that feeling is misaligned and if you pick up on that, Kathy, then obviously there's a misalignment because you're the viewer seeing it and that's where it's really good this feedback it's really important to flag it to say you know what that doesn't sit let's just remove it when it's digital it is so easy to remove it it's when you've invested in print and you've done a 2000 print run and then you allow like, ouch that was an expensive um, uh, mistake it's like that's there's little processes involved. You check in with people, you get someone to sign it off. Um, there's someone just going, you know what, that's a very beautiful image, but it really doesn't make sense in context of the copy that's been written for this brochure. And I think that's where it's team and that's where it's learning and giving yourself permission to learn. And, you know, and you, you'll tune in as well. The more you practice this, you'll tune in or you'll spot even you know you as leaders and pastors of your own church you will spot and give feedback to your communication team and go you know what great 
because that's your 20 year old self in the current market of 20 year olds. But you know what? I'm a 50 year old and that does not sit well for the target audience of a, of a cross generational church. And I think that's really important too, to consider your audience. I think this is on repeat actually in, in many of the sessions, the brand consider who you're communicating to. So it's not actually in the style of the designer, it's actually the style and the uniqueness of your church that comes through. And there's a cross reference of mixed flavors, mixed generations, um, mixed genres, just to actually suit the style of your church. And that really is, you know, going back to Toronto, that's the style of Toronto. That will not sit well with any other church because that's Toronto and that's unique to Toronto. But if you notice in the imagery, there is um, cross-generational um, and so I think it's also important just to consider your audience and in context and understand who you're communicating to and does that style actually reach that audience just as much as being in line with the brand and the more you get to know the brand the more you realize you can also filter and go you know what that worked really well last year, but this year it's looking a little dated. Or you know what, that doesn't actually fit, fit the context or the audience. And I think this is again, just a learning. We're constantly learning, we're constantly growing with the brand. So please give yourself permission to um, be free. It's a safe space to make mistakes because we value feedback, we value that evaluation in order then to, you know what, how can we make this better for next time? Um, so that's why I love digital because it's quick and easy to remove a mistake and um, it's um, cheaper. <laughs> so any other questions? That was a great question, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say I love what I'm seeing though. I think I love our brand. I think, I think all across you can see the churches like Catch the Fire Ottawa. You guys are doing an amazing job with your, you know, Instagram posts and it, it generally looks fantastic. So I just want to say, I love what you guys have built. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Kathy. It's um, really exciting when it's a team effort. And that's what's really lovely that you are seeing it and for you also to notice across across the board. And I encourage you, we encourage you to, to look at what other churches are doing because that's what inspires as well because we are one big family. And, um, and I think that's, you know, ask each other questions. You know, do you recommend a photographer? You're actually quite close to us. Um, someone could actually come. Um, and this is also another opportunity for all you creatives. If you do want to freelance at any, in any field, um, whether it's copywriting, um, as well as um, visual designer, as well as photographer, please um, email me because we'd love more people on there. There's still people building their portfolio um, and ready to get back to me, but you know, we'd love for that to grow. So then it's reputable people that we recommend who understand the culture as well, because those people who understand the culture of Catch the Fire will know what shots to get. It's not so prescriptive in get a shot of a family. It's actually, you know what, that family's really worshiping. I really want to take a photograph of that. It really gets the moment and being present so definitely welcome any any um, creatives to actually just get in touch with me to add more to that list is wonderful and if you know of other people that are not on that list and you want to email me those and you want to recommend them and give a big shout out to them for sure just email me that that's really helpful because here at the end of the day we're facilitating supporting you um, and that's our goal in all of this um, so um, yeah it's wonderful love journey in this journey with you all so thank you Great. Anything more, Marcotte? Are you good? Um, yeah, oh. I actually just want to add uh, something about the target audience. Um, and I think it's really being aware of the culture that you're in. And again, um, this is not just the context of church culture, but where you are in your world, in your community. What works for Canada might not work in the US. Um, I'm talking geographically and like um, even different parts of the city. Like, are you, a, I don't want to say aff, like if you're in an affluent city or like affluent part of the city and you're showing grit and grime, like that's still know, know where you are in the, in the context of the world and what you really are trying to say to the audience um, is basically like just another like, hint like celebrate your 
celebrate the differences too that that you have and not just you know like folk not just focusing on what it what it is to be i don't know catch the fire i guess i just mean like apply the catch the fire life into who you are where you are in the world and like the the life that you guys are living in the world that you're in yeah that's great thanks marka um, and yeah, what I'll do as well is um, with all of this, I think as well, one thing that keeps being asked is almost like a how to in um, the photography, what subjects to take photographs of, what errors. And so that's a great opportunity for me to write a blog post on the article section. And then you can have access to um, content there just to even brief um, a photographer just to help you. Um, let me just see, I've got a few chats here. Um, let's come up, hold on, let me just see. Ooh, Maruna, I'm glad you're here. There we go, here we go. Um, oh yeah, so, um, so the recommended photographers um, on ctfbrand.com, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom in the footer, um, you'll see um, a, a link to creative freelancers. And um, on there, we've put their location. But some things, I mean, photographers is obviously location based, but designers don't need to be location. You can have a designer um, from across the globe to do your work. Um, um, and actually, to be honest, some, some photographers probably fly in as well. So you just, just ask them to see whether they um, are transportable as well. They're not just location based. Um, but yeah, on the footer, is where you'll find all the creative freelancers. Anything else? Any other questions? No. Okay, let me just see. Um, great. Sounds good. I think that's it. So thank you so much. If I've missed anyone and missed any questions, um, <laughs> feel free to um, email me at joe.smith at catchthefire.com and you'll get a friendly response um, in any question. And yeah, feel free. It's lovely to see you. Thank you so much for connecting. The next one we're gonna be talking about in a month's time is color. Um, and actually that will help your photography as well and imagery um, um, because color, oh my goodness, lush color of the brand that we've established will also connect to um, all your palette, all your um, communications. Um, so looking forward to it thank you so much love you guys it's lovely to see you thank Until you next. joe really appreciate you oh you're so welcome